Whoa. So this. After receiving the witch's blessing the night before, the boss has the go-ahead to show us more of their bazooka operation. The next day, he invites us to see how the world's cheapest drug is made. Buenas. Buenas. ¿Cómo le va, don? Ah, la mano. Gracias. Entonces, ¿esto es la pasta de coca? Es la pasta de coca. La base de coca. Que sale de la hoja que se recoge allá en las fincas. The word bazooka comes from base, as in the base layer of cocaine. Because bazooka is smoked, some people compare it to crack. But while crack is relatively pure, bazooka contains the toxic residues of chemicals used to oh, process no. coke. Everything from gasoline to sulfuric acid. Oh my gosh. This causes toxic hepatitis, chemical pneumonia, lead poisoning, and cerebral atrophy. Manufact okay, so I just came across this video and I rewound it like... Oh my gosh. Wow. I was like, I gotta do a screen video of this. Wow. What'd she just say? There's add even as in the base layer of cocaine. Because bazooka is smoked, some people compare it to crack. But while crack is relatively pure, bazooka contains the toxic residues of chemicals oh my used gosh. to process coke. Everything from gasoline to sulfuric acid. And that's probably what's rotting people's faces off over in the... Um, those other parts. Oh my goodness. This causes toxic hepatitis, chemical pneumonia, lead poisoning, and cerebral atrophy. Manufacturers add even more cheap chemicals and solvents to ignite and extract the cocaine content, which, when smoked, are toxic. ¿Y la liga que contiene? Bazooka chefs will also add elements to bulk out the product. Cement, volcanic ash, <gasps> and even human bones what? are rumored to be added. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh my gosh, and oh my goodness. I mean, we could one say this could be propaganda. Um, this is coming from Vice. This could just be go ahead and solidifying things um, by uh, solidifying stories that are that people my age heard, which I'm under 40, uh, not by much, but, uh, right. <laughs> it, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Bazooka chefs will also add elements to bulk out the product. Cement, volcano. Like doing Coke, but it's bone ash or cement. <laughs> Bazooka chefs will also add elements to bulk out the product. Oh my Cement, goodness. volcanic ash, and even human bones are rumored to be added. Or this is all bullshit. And they're just being like, yeah, yeah, we're going to make ourselves seem tough because we're not living in the 70s or the 80s where we just can't go run up on somebody. Man, all of a sudden, I'm stuffy and my lungs are fucking clogged. <coughs> and the furnace is just turned on. And I haven't covered the vents up. That's why. That's what I need to do. <coughs> the furnace is just turned on twice and all the vents to the basement, especially this one, uh, not even a foot away. Oh my gosh, I had to pressure wash the basement. It's filled with mold. Like, it's gone off. And I, I don't know why either, because the hot water is super hot. Oh my goodness. I thought I've already turned it down. Oh man. Let's watch this. <laughs> Wait, what say? 50 grams. Okay, so let me think here. Let's think back to chemistry. 3.5 grams is an eighth. 5 grams is a nickel. I need a 
pen. I love algebra. Let's see if I can do this without. So it says 50 grams. 50 grams. But I don't quite know what the equation is. 50 grams you add. I think he said something like. Five grams per one gram, is that what he says? <laughs> four or five grams, I said three or four. So you add, all right, take four or five. See, sometimes I can't even. So you get uh, 50 grams, four or five grams of that mixed into it is apparently bone matter. <laughs> I'm going to snort the calcium out your bones. Oh my goodness. Think of that movie, How High. I mean, this could just be helping reiterate some other crazy stories about Hollywood and such. Perhaps, I think. I don't know. Maybe I read that in a book. Who knows? Uh, excuse me. Okay, so 50 grams. Take four or five grams. Out of that 50 grams to be human bone matter particulate? What? No way. That's probably, John, is, that's probably, you know, half that, and they probably just put dirt in it. And again, I'm only speaking of the first thoughts that came to my head. I have no idea what I'm about to hear, but these are my first thoughts that popped to my head as I watched this. Everyone makes their own decision because no one's forcing anyone. Right? And it's just there and it's just there and they just get hooked on it. What do the streets look like? Wait, where are they? 20 cents. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Cricket. <laughs> that one cricket, he, he's wanting to hear the music. People that have grown around substance. High society will show you how drugs are shaping our world. Yeah, this is not. I've heard about the pink cocaine wave, I think. this come out? Wow, my nose hasn't been stuffy. Oh, one day ago. Yikes. 711,000. <laughs> Why the job end as a plantation farmer? Because what? People who own the plantation either died, sold out. Much I don't mean sold out, but I mean, maybe they were getting elderly and it was like, okay, take my land. Do whatever you gotta do. I need to retire. No, I don't have any heirs. I don't have anybody to run this land, or et cetera, et cetera. Here we go. Maybe that's what, you know, the Census Bureau has been waiting for. <laughs> So this certain select group of people that don't have any children, the baby mover, excuse me, baby boomers who don't have any children, who have some assets but not all assets. Mm -hmm. 
la ciudad es un campo muy lindo, pero tiene que uno tener con qué sobrevivir, si no. This mean they're like cutting their own people. This year, riots came to the Colombian streets. The country was already reeling from masses of internal risk. All right, so this was. Refugees fleeing from cartel controlled areas into the cities. Then chaos erupted after the pandemic, leading to widespread protests and brutal police retaliation. By blocking roads, these riots in turn caused fuel and food shortages that have added to the problem. All of this is music to the Gulf Clan's ears, who now have an army of displaced unemployed workers to turn into bazooka addicts or recruit to their organization. The government. Okay, so here's my flip side. So if I was to be in a college class right now, we'd hear that side of the story, but then we'd also pose the question, what if this is propaganda? What if everything we're seeing here has been taken out of context? What if this is staged? Um, what if this is real, but what if it's not in the country that we are being told? I mean, we as Americans don't know what's going on over there. I mean... Unless we, what, go to Google Earth? I mean, how could we prove um, the vill uh, validation of things that we see on TV? How could we prove it without being there? So there's Google Earth. Um, looking for live webcam feeds. Uh, blogs. But, yeah, taking your, how, your channel whatever news, your BBC news, your American news, like, yeah, you can take it as face value, but... I mean, even this right here. Basuko, what if half these wars are because of this? And it's not even like war wars. These are just drug people fighting back and forth. But yeah, we want to be told it's something else. It's, I mean, really, like, pros all the questions. And Oh, man. Duh has taken a hardline approach, declaring a war on bazooka dens. The military recently swooped into a Bogota neighborhood. Just cannibalism. Bone material. Digging up graves. Named El Bronx. Targeting bazooka users. They found bodies, dismembered limbs, drugs, weapons, and child prostitutes. They tore down buildings, but it wasn't long before San Bernardo became the new El Bronx. ¿Y tú crees que el gobierno va a poder demoler todas estas ollas o que si demuelen una va a salir otra? Demuelen Make a big F in jail. What is wrong? Así sea en otro barrio por allá. O sea, ¿tú crees que el gobierno jamás podrá ni la policía acabar con esto? So this is where, what? Aren't we part of, what? I don't know. We're one of the richest countries in the world, right? We could literally, according to these standard of the livings, Solve all these people's problems. <laughs> Take two miles of land, maybe more, and just build straight cabins for the whole country. <sighs> Establish homes, live off the land, give them a chance, and help them live off the land, but we have all the money to help deter um, pathogens, predators. We have ways to secure people who are out there and have them feel safe. But no, we want to act like we don't. We're in the deep woods of the jungles. There's monkeys all around. There's tigers all around. Yeah, send out a fucking frequency. I hate swearing. Get a little frequency machine and send out a certain, what, 820 hertz and blah, 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 blah. That's not going to make any tiger, lion, or bear come near you. Jeez. Don't we know that yet? Can't go out in the woods. You're going to be 
a hundred to hurt myself thing. No, why don't you wear one of the your door jammer things? I mean, that could be a possible possibility. Pero tú qué piensas un poco de, de esa situación de cuerpo, de esa indigencia extrema, o sea, es decir, a ti te, te, te sientes mal de que esta gente le están vendiendo estos productos que los está volviendo tan adictos. De, de esa situación de como de pobreza e indigencia extrema, o sea, es decir, a ti te, te, te sientes mal de que esta gente le está vendiendo este producto que los está volviendo tan adictos. See, that's awful. You never really love nothing, even if you're stacked on top of one another in the Bronx. At least the Bronx had neighborly really love, right? So you just don't give a crap about anybody. Or the bottom of one of those beautiful mountains. Underneath. I'm standing on top of... The Klan are very happy to put the blame on the government for the poverty in Colombia. But through their production and trafficking of a drug as cheap as Basuco, they are capitalizing on the situation and are also responsible for the crisis. Basuco's popularity among a growing population of unemployed urban poor fuels the violent criminal enterprises that are threatening to tear Colombia apart. But it's also destroying people's mental health. And because Basuco is more deadly than any other street drug due to the toxic chemicals involved, in many cases, it's killing them too. We've met up with Jenny and Julian, a couple Julian. who live on the streets of Bogota and have both become addicted to Basuco. They spend most of their day collecting waste, which they can resell as recycling. El vidrio, por ejemplo, el vidrio es muy barato. Okay. El vidrio, el kilo de vidrio, cuesta This is like what America gave me, uh -huh. like, what, 10 years ago? I mean, parts of it are kind of like this. I mean, when it comes to, like, being able to buy drugs inside the market. Jenny is one of an estimated 5.6 million Colombians who were left unemployed during the pandemic. Entonces, ¿Qué siente el adicto del bazuco cuando no tiene bazuco y lo necesita? El cuerpo te. ¿Y, y qué es? ¿Cómo lo, cómo lo describe? Given that the government's not going to reduce poverty from one day to the next, the only hope for bazooka users currently is harm reduction. 
With Jenny and Julian, we're going to meet an NGO called Acción Técnica Social. Julian, the founder, has invited us to film a workshop where he's teaching Bazooka users how to consume using a safe pipe that filters out much of the bazooka's harmful chemicals. ¿Qué es lo que permite? Esta casoletica lo que va a evitar son dos cosas, lo que yo les dije. Que el bazooka tenga el contacto con el fuego directo y se, for, y se forme se forme esas sustancias que ya les dije que son más tóxicas que vienen en la terapia. El bazooka se va a calentar al punto que la única sustancia que se va a evaporar de todo el polvo que hay es la base de coca. ¿Sí? Segundo, algunos de los adulterantes más comunes que le suelen echar al bazuco se queden aquí y no, y no, no se vayan en el pipazo, con el cual, como les digo, tienen como un impacto menos negativo en la salud de ustedes. A la verdad, para, para, para decirle si está bueno o no. Julian's safe pipe is currently a prototype which he hopes to distribute to health centers one day, similar to clean needle programs. Básicamente, si hay una correlación, digamos, en, entre abandono estatal, instituciones, un poco, y, y el bazuco, ¿no? Y el consumo de bazuco. Lo que yo he verificado es que, obviamente, por lo que es una sustancia tan estigmatizada y el consumidor también se estigmatiza a través de la sustancia, pues, obviamente, eh, es como una regla el hecho de que si tú no abandonas el consumo de bazuco, entonces te mereces todo lo que te suceda y pierdes como tu ciudadanía. Bazooka is stigmatized simply because poor people take it and it's often associated with crime but it's part and parcel of the cocaine trade. La policía colombiana allanó este fin de semana el expendio de drogas más grande de Colombia. Las autoridades dijeron que 11 individuos fueron capturados y la policía incautó grandes cantidades de cocaína, marihuana y una sustancia adictiva conocida como bazooka. Pero yo pensé que el consumo de bazooka está muy estigmatizada la sustancia. Eh, las alternativas que se ofrecen a veces en el distrito pues, tienen mucho que ver como con, con, esa, con esa cuestión ética de si te quieres que te ayude mucho de dejar de consumir. Eh, la opción de no consumir no es la solución más inmediata para este tipo de, de, de personas o consumidores que tienen además una situación de vida un poco más complicada. Entonces la reducción de riesgo y daño me permite a mí eh, dar alternativas para mejorar uh -huh. esa calidad de vida y las dinámicas también de vida a estas personas de una manera en que ellos también pueden tomar la decisión propia y que las apliquen y que sean funcionales para ellos. El problema realmente del bazooka más allá de lo físico-químico que en este se trabaja mucho también es la parte de la calidad y el cambio acá es un proceso pues que ellos entienden se les nota que si salen Given that the government's not going to reduce poverty from one day to the next, the only hope for bazooka users currently is harm reduction. With Jenny and Julian, we're going to meet an NGO called Acción Técnica Social. Julian, the founder, has invited us to film a workshop where he's teaching bazooka users how to consume using a safe pipe that filters out much of the bazooka's harmful chemicals. ¿Qué es lo que permite? Esta casoletica lo que va a evitar son dos cosas, lo que yo les dije.
Whoops. que el bazuco tenga el contacto con el fuego directo y se, for y se forme se forme esas sustancias que ya les dije que son más tóxicas que mm -hmm. vienen en la terapia el bazuco se va a calentar al punto que la única sustancia que se va a evaporar de todo el polvo que hay es la base de coca ¿Sí? segundo, algunos de los adulterantes más comunes que le suelen echar al bazuco se queden aquí y no, y no, no se vayan en el pipazo con el cual, como les digo, tienen como un impacto menos negativo en la salud de ustedes. A la verdad, para, para, para decirle si está bueno, que la igual no. Julian's safe pipe is currently a prototype which he hopes to distribute to health centers one day, similar to clean needle programs. Básicamente, si hay una correlación, digamos, en, entre abandono estatal, instituciones, un poco, y, y el bazuco, ¿no? El consumo de bazuco. Lo que yo he verificado es que, obviamente, por lo que es una sustancia tan estigmatizada y el consumidor también se estigmatiza okay. a través de la sustancia, pues, obviamente, eh, es como una regla el hecho de que si tú no abandonas el consumo de bazuco, entonces te mereces todo lo que te suceda y pierdes como tu ciudadanía. Bazuco is stigmatized simply because poor people take it and it's often associated with crime, but it's part and parcel of the cocaine trade. La policía colombiana allanó este fin de semana el expendio de drogas más grande de Colombia. Las autoridades dijeron que 11 individuos fueron capturados y la policía incautó grandes cantidades de cocaína, marihuana y una sustancia adictiva conocida como bazuco. Pero yo pensé que el consumo de bazuco está muy estigmatizada la sustancia, eh, las alternativas que se ofrecen a veces en el distrito pues, tienen mucho que ver como con, con esa con esa cuestión ética de si te quieres que te ayude mucho de dejar de consumir. Eh, la opción de no consumir no es la solución más inmediata para este tipo de, de, de personas o consumidores que tienen además una situación de vida un poco más complicada. Entonces la reducción de riesgo y daño me permite a mí dar alternativas para mejorar uh -huh. esa calidad de vida y pues, las dinámicas también de vida a estas personas de una manera en que ellos también pueden tomar la decisión propia y que las apliquen y que sean funcionales para ellos. El problema realmente del bazooka más allá de lo físico-químico, que en este se trabaja mucho también es la parte de la calidad de la Es un proceso pues, que ellos entienden, se les nota que si saben qué es, qué están haciendo es porque sí. tanto laborales, ocupacionales, de salud y demás, que les permita digamos, adaptarse a las dinámicas de vida que ellos manejan y que, y, que igual, y que igual que lo hacemos nosotros puedan elegir modificar los estilos de vida que ellos manejan dentro de sus realidades para que finalmente puedan tener como más funcionalidad y, y tengan digamos, menos riesgos tanto en, en sus contextos como en sus consumos. So through workshops like these, where bazooka users are treated in a dignified way, we can see the human side behind the bazooka addiction. We saw, for instance, Jenny and Julian, who are a super sweet couple, but they are caught up in this vicious cycle. It's really sad, but it's the reality for thousands of Colombians. A lot has been said about Western cocaine consumers being responsible for a trail of death. But as well as the killings, there is also a toxic byproduct, causing massive harm to Colombian society. As is often the case with global trade, poor nations suffer to produce goods consumed by wealthy ones. Unfortunately, it's a vicious circle here. As the drug trade continues to fund armed conflicts, more people are being displaced. Many of them are becoming addicts or working for the cartels. We can't just stop the global drug trade. But what's clear is that if people have jobs, they don't tend to become addicts or criminals. Perhaps a solution to the bazooka epidemic and many of Colombia's issues lies not in fighting crime, but in giving people opportunity.